we will first remove the three mounting screws from the water pump. Please note that there is one that's longer. That would be the one on the bottom. You will wiggle the water pump and pull on it and it will come off the engine. You don't have to drain the cooling system to do clutch maintenance. If you do want to drain the cooling system, this brass bolt here is, when we're removed, will allow the water to drain. The water pump seals to the engine with an O-ring here. Looking at the inside of the water pump, we see here the shaft which drives the impeller. The brown color in there is the water pump seal. To do maintenance to this device, you will remove the snap ring which is visible there on the interior and the components come out this way. This pin going through the shaft will fall into place in one of the two cutouts in the end of the crankshaft here. So when reinstalling this, be certain that you have proper alignment of this pin with the crank. Here we have the water pump assembly for the Pro. The components that are inside the water pump are shown here. Note that the water pump shaft and the impeller are opposite the normal threads. This is counterclockwise to install the impeller to the shaft. This is because as the shaft rotates against the pressure of the water, the propeller impeller will be self-tightening to disassemble the water pump. We will remove this bushing here. It has a nylon washer seal. Inspect this. This is the water pump shaft that you see inside. There is a small washer there. Now to remove this interior of this pump we will take a snap ring plier and remove this interior snap ring here. Then I will take a small screwdriver and I'm going to insert it in here to, to stop the impeller and so essentially what I'll be doing is I'll have the screwdriver in like this. So I'm putting it in here against the impeller blade and then again because the threads are opposite the norm I will actually be rotating the shaft as if it were tightening it, but in reality I'm going to be removing it from the impeller. And it comes out like this. Now we have a small washer that you may recover later or if you're lucky it may fall out. There it is. It goes on top of the impeller when you're reassembling and then this piece sits like that. And this is actually a, a bushing bearing for this end of the shaft. Now, we are going to remove the seal, and there's several ways you can do this. You can actually heat this aluminum piece uh, on a hot plate if you want to, to slightly expand it to break the, the, the seal of the rubber against the metal. Many times it's possible just to pry the seal out. We can use a screwdriver, a fairly large one, and, and if we're lucky we can just get a hold of the seal like this. We're going to ruin it, but obviously our intention is to replace it. And very carefully, we don't want to damage the, the housing of the water pump. And if, if it gives you some problem, then you may want to heat this in, like I explained, on a hot plate or using a heat gun and be careful when you're doing something like this that you don't impale yourself with your tool. Okay, so I've heated the housing a little and the seal is going to come out, no problem. And we have our, our impeller that we'll remove from the housing. You, don't, you wouldn't want to heat this too much. You w might melt this, but just a little heating on this was enough to expand this and break loose the, the seal. We'll clean all the components before we attempt to reassemble it. 
Okay, so I have my shaft, my new seal. Uh, note that the seal goes this way. The other side of the seal is completely brown. You'll see the recessed area it will be visible on this end of the shaft. I've reinstalled the impeller. And I've lubricated the seal and the area around the outside of the seal with silicone grease and also I've cleaned and lubricated the interior of the housing. Notice there is the snap ring groove. We'll be wanting to press the seal in just as far as it takes for it to just get past that groove. So obviously it, it goes in like this. Now I actually have found a socket that is perfect for using it as a tool. I'm using the socket like this and it sits very nice down in the seal and you can then press the seal in place and if you have any problems using this method just with your hands if you need to you may put this in a vise and very lightly but you can see that I can do it just with my hands and again you only want to press the seal just as far as it takes to clear the snap ring groove. I have the snap ring reinstalled. If you want to test rotate this assembly, remember always counterclockwise. If you were to rotate this, this clockwise, it's possible that you would loosen the impeller. So always testing it counterclockwise. We have a smooth movement. Then again we have this small washer that is going to sit on the shaft first before this bushing. So I'm going to take, going to take a small amount of silicone grease and lubricate this area and then I can put the washer there and put it back together. and we want to tighten this just snugly because we don't want to squish that nylon seal and damage it. Then once again we will test and we have nice smooth movement so I prefer to align the pin with this bottom water pump hole, mounting hole, and then I align the crankshaft of the engine the same way so that when I reinstall the water pump these components align. Uh, you may find that if you remove the small o-ring which sits here and make an initial test fit of the pump to the engine to be certain that everything is falling into place then you can carefully remove it put the o-ring on and then reinstall it and then you're certain that you have these components aligned correctly and that these pins have fallen into their position on the drive of the crank. I want to mention that really you should not attempt to force this component onto the engine if you have resistance then you should double check your work to make sure that you have all the pieces properly aligned in 2002 and 2003 this bronze water pump bushing was showing signs of premature wear they decided to change the alloy and to know the difference between the early model and the later improved version, they changed it from Allen to Torx head. Beginning in the 2004 model year, this will remove with a Torx, not an Allen as shown in this early video. If you have one with an Allen, or if you see one offered to you as a replacement part that uses an Allen, do not accept that. That would be the inferior original design. The Torx ones are the improved version. Other than that, it's almost impossible to tell the difference because it's the alloy. Thank you for watching my videos.